Hello there, and welcome back to my senior project. To, for right now, we're going to be making a uh, croque monsieur for our French day, for lunch. Um, so to start off, we're actually going to go over to the stove, and we're actually going to make the, what sort of is like a cheese sauce first. So you're going to need about uh, two tablespoons of butter. Um, we're going to actually put that onto the heat, melt that a little bit. Uh, you're gonna want to you stick it in there. Let the let the uh, pan get nice and hot. That way it will melt the butter. Because um, you do need the butter to be fully melted and sort of spread all over. Okay. So once you get down to, so that you don't have that much butter left and the butter starts to actually bubble, you can turn it down a little just so that it's not uh, it's not actually burning into the pan itself. So once you have the butter all melted, you're going to take measuring spoons and take two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. It'll, it'll make sense while we're doing this afterwards. So you want to take two tablespoons of this, or I'm sorry, three tablespoons, my bad. You want three tablespoons. And then you're wanting, you have to mix this around for about two minutes, just mix Mix the uh, the flour and butter all together. Make sure that all the all the flour sort of has uh, has butter on it. It'll sort of look it'll look uh, like a caramelish color once it's all mixed together. And of course, it's going to stick to the uh, to the spoon unless you use a wooden spoon, which I do not have, and which I'm assuming most college kids do not have either. But basically what I'm doing is I'm just mixing it around. I'm, uh, I'm sort of smushing the flour so that it, it uh, goes out of those clumps and actually sort of will mix with the butter. Um, just keep mixing it around. Keep smoothing it out uh, so that you get those, those clumps of flour and sort of get each piece of flour into the, into the butter. Okay. So that's been about two minutes. So once you do this, uh, make sure it's not burning on the sides or anything. It does. It can do that if you have the heat up too high. Um, then you're going to add uh, two, about a cup of, uh, of hot milk. So and you can turn the heat down for this. Um, so, it's def so it's not as high. So and again, you're going to want to mix in all of that flour that you put in. Um, so you're going to want to do this until it's sort of as thickened into a sauce. Um, try to really get those, those chunks out. I know it's going to be hard though because uh, the flour is sticking together with all the, the liquid that's in it. But once it's sort of gotten to a, a hardened, or not a hardened, a, uh, a thicker sort of sauce type texture, then you can actually take it off the heat, which is what I've done here. Um, you just take it off, and then uh, you're going to be adding some salt, pepper, and cheese, actually. Um, so, and this will be the top of the cro croque monsieur. And as you add the ingredients, make sure to just mix them in just so that they all don't uh, clump to one particular side or anything. So, and of course, you can use just about any cheese. Um, uh, butter, try to go unsaltened. But for me, I'm going to be using Parmesan, and instead of the traditional Gruyere, um, which is a very expensive cheese, I'm going to be using Swiss, which is a little more, a little bit more manageable. So, and with this Swiss, you just really, you want to break it up, um, just so that it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't all stick to one particular piece. And again, it's at your discretion, uh, as to how much cheese you add. It's sort of, it's dependent on how much you like it, how much, uh, how much you don't, that type of thing. To see it's sort of a nice uh, almost paste um, 
this would actually be great because the cheese is all melted inside of it, which means that it's all spread around. Um, I know it looks like a mess, but it will taste wonderful on the crock monsieur. So I'll just add a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. Remember the Parmesan cheese is semi-salty, so, uh, so you don't actually need that much salt. Again, you can add some, some more later. You're also going to be using ham, um, which is a salty meat. So there we go. We add that, and we can actually just leave, let this sit uh, for right now. Nothing really is going to happen. So <clears throat> we add that. Uh, we also have the oven going at 400. Um, and right now we're going to do the bread. The bread is, of course, very important. So what I picked up was a French baguette, of course. Use nothing less, nothing more. And I'm going to actually be using this entire baguette for the next week or so. So I'm just going to take what I want from this and I'll probably I'll make a sandwich about this big. So, and if you have a French baguette or you have a baguette or really any bread um, that is open in a bag such as this one, uh, try to do what I did, which was take a plastic bag and wrap it around the end of it. That way the bread won't actually get stick. Now we have this. I'm going to cut it in half. Even the bread smells good. And there we go. So we have our two halves. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, put them in the oven for a little bit just to sort of almost toast them. Um, you really don't need an oven for this. You can also do it with a toaster oven. It's completely fine. Uh, but I figured I wanted the oven because that way later on when I put the cheese on, it'll cook a little more quickly. So, oh, I'll bring you with me. So let's go oven. And I'm just going to put this in for about five minutes. Um, I don't really like my bread all that toasted, so there it is. Uh, and that'll be good. Let's set the timer. Now, five minutes. I'll see you in five minutes. Okay, so that's been five minutes, so uh, let's get these out of here. You can see they're nice and toasted on the edges. It actually looks quite nice. I'm going to bring them over. Put them on here next to our sauce. That sauce also, you can give it a stir every once in a while. It's not going to hurt it. Um, and that way, you'll just make sure that it sort of stays as a, as almost a sauce. Because um, that cheese will actually start to remold, if that's the right word. Um, so yeah. So there we go. So that's there. We now have our bread. We have mustard. Mustard is essential. So, of course, you can also just grab a mustard from, you know, Chick fil A, McDonald's, wherever you go, and just use some of that. I happen to have gotten some of this because I'll be using it later on in some other meals. But you want to just put a little bit of mustard on. That way, you have some sort of sauce on your bread. It's also very hot. So I'm going to try not to burn myself. You should try the same. So there we go. There's just a little bit of mustard on both sides. Of course, put however much you want on there. You can also put uh, Miracle Whip. I know that'll work. Um, I guess people could put ketchup if they wanted to. But the traditional croque monsieur will have a little bit of mustard, uh, usually Dijon. Um, I have yellow mustard handy to me, so that's what I use. But you can use Dijon mustard as well. That's also very good. Uh, so there's our bread and our sauce. So now we're going to put the ham on. So grab some of that. And I would recommend probably about two to two and a half pieces. Um, that way you at least have, uh, you have sort of a hearty sandwich there. Um, and it's not, it's not too much bread. That way you're meat to bread to cheese to mustard ratio is just perfect because you know how important that is. Okay, so we put that on. Great. Now 
typically you'll put Gruyere cheese on, but I don't have Gruyere. I have Swiss. Swiss is just as good, if not better. And so I'm now going to put a couple slices of Swiss cheese on because I like cheese. Oh, man. And there we go. We have bread, mustard, meat, cheese, and now more bread. Once we put this other piece of bread on, though, we actually are going to take this sauce that we made and let me actually grab some tin foil. Now, we're going to take this sauce that we made that sort of looks like white mush, like porridge almost, and we're going to slather the top of the bread with it. Trust me, yes, it does look kind of gross. Actually looks quite gross, but it actually smells really good. And I know it's going to taste great because there's more cheese in it. There's butter. The flour just sort of holds everything together. There's milk. Mmm, it does taste good. So, once we have that, we're actually going to put it back in the oven. Remember, the thing is hot. We're going to put it back in the oven for another five minutes. And that way, this cheese on here, oh, it's tipsy. That cheese on there will actually start to melt and then hopefully start to uh, get a little bit hard just because that way it'll be crispy on the top. So, I will see you in five minutes. All right, so it's been five minutes and this actually looks very good right now. So, take it out. Oh, I hear it sizzling. And there's that, there's that Swiss from the inside that's uh, leaked out onto it. Also, mine fell over. Um, so that's why there's sort of cheese everywhere. And I was very sad because I watched it happen and could do nothing about it. So, wonderful. We now <coughs> have our croque monsieur. So, that's it for today's lunch. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. And now you know how to make a classic French lunch. Bon appétit! If you'd like to see the recipe, I have the entire recipe down in the bottom in the description, along with uh, the ingredients and everything that uh, you have to do to prepare it. Um, also, follow my Instagram at college underscore eats 101. Uh, I have pictures of all the food and what each of the meals actually is. Uh, so, thanks again for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!